What's up guys? This morning I'm going to be working on taking off my old Camtad Toyota because as you can see this one here got crushed. I'm going to need to replace that both front and rear uh, but this one is the one I'm having issues the most. I can't get an alignment unless I get that fixed. Uh, I'll show you the other one and what it should look like and it's like this. So I ordered some from uh, Dirt King. You can order from Total Chaos or Dirt King. Dirt King is just a lot cheaper, about 40 bucks. So I went ahead with them. So I'm gonna be replacing that. I'll show you how to do it. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> With a 19 millimeter socket, I'm gonna proceed to remove the bolts from my front lower ball joint attachment. And also with the 19 millimeter socket, I'm gonna remove the front shock absorber bolt. And if you got a floor jack, just put a little pressure on that shock absorber to remove that bottom bolt. And I don't show it here, but I did loosen the lower control arm cam bolts. And as you can see, this lower control arm came down nice and easy. And then start removing the cam bolts. Now, the same way you found the lower control arm, it's the same way you want to put it back, the whole setup. Just remember in what order they were in. Very important. I'm going to do a pilot hole on these three welding areas here. I'll do a small little pilot hole, then a bigger one. I don't want to go all the way through, but just enough to take this out and I'm going to hit it with a chisel and a hammer and knock that out and do the same to this side here so you can see that one's pretty bad and then do it to this one as well and the other side Now these are the new cam tab gussets and they're side cam tabs, they come separate. These I'll have to weld, but I wanna do just a side to side comparison. These are my OEM cam tab gussets. Look at the side cam tabs, look how cheap they look. They're like 1 16th of an inch compared to 3 16th of an inch right there. Look at that, dirt kings, baby. So don't know, why Toyota would put these cheap, scrawny looking cam tabs on an off-road vehicle. You know, like, okay, maybe for the limited edition, that'd be fine. You're not going off-roading per se. I mean, I know people, some people do, some crazy people do, but when you're doing a TRD or a uh, Tacoma off-road like I got, you just don't put these on there. Come on, Toyota, I do better than that. So what, what am I gonna do? Okay, the process is clean these up real good, brush them, clean them with the solvent. Then I'm gonna go ahead and weld on the side here and on here and right there. Then I'm gonna sand it real good. I'm gonna grind it a little bit, get any uh, imperfections out so they can remain flat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weld these to my rig. You don't want to weld on the inside because the uh, cam tabs are going to go in there 
and you don't want that to interfere when you're doing your alignment at the alignment shop. Another thing I want to add is the type of wire you're using for chromoly. Let's check this out, Let's show you what I got. Very important, uh, the type of wire you're going to be using because if you're welding chromoly, you got to have the right type of wire. Now this is solid uh, and there is a type right there. There's a number. If you look at it where it says part number, then under type, the ER70S-6 is what you want, okay? And uh, that's very important when doing chromoly because this is what you need. Uh, and also the setting, uh, the pressure setting uh, will affect the welding performance. If you don't have this right, should be around three, I figured close to, th close to three works best for me right there for solid wires. And it'll give you a, uh, the settings here and as well as how hot uh, this will be burning, what kind of steel you're using. Uh, my, uh, my, my cam tabs are, let's see if you can see, 3 16 thick. So I have it at the highest setting, D, and the wire feed at seven, or just under seven. It works perfect for what I'm doing here. Okay, what I'm using for gas is, as you can tell here, argon 75%, carbon dioxide 25%. And I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, turn this on I'm going to show you where's the sweet spot for your gas it should be at right here between 25 to 30 I like 25 so once you start hitting that trigger it's going to come down to 25 I like that pressure uh, one thing I find helpful is to have a flashlight or even a light on your hard hat to point at what you're gonna be welding helps out a ton because once you put this on, it is dark even at the lightest setting. So I find it very helpful for me to have a light on there on whatever you're doing. And now uh, when the lights go off on your helmet here, uh, then this can help out with what you're seeing. It's a lot better. I'm gonna go ahead and heat that up because something I've learned is uh, you want this hot. Now I'm gonna be welding for the first time. I have friends that know how to weld, but at the time they weren't around and they weren't gonna be able to help for at least two weeks and I needed to get this job done. So I grabbed some scrap metal and I practiced, as you can tell, is that sheet of metal uh, near where I'm welding on. And I just started to practice, practice for a couple days and then I went to work and I've learned, I learned a lot. I went on YouTube, saw a bunch of videos, how to weld for beginners, hand coordination, and all that. And let me tell you, it is a tough craft to learn, especially on the fly. This stuff you don't learn in a couple days, you know. I got to hand it to these welders. When I see dimes, I give these guys props now. And it's tough. But anyways, I went ahead and did it. Grabbed the bull by the horns, and I rode the son of a gun, man. You know, when you don't have people around to help you and you're on your own, uh, and stuff's expensive. I said, whatever, man, I'm just going to get the job done and uh, it's not going to be pretty, but it's going to hold. And it is, you know, now after grinding, uh, these cam tats, I'm going to go ahead and use some xylene to clean up, uh, the area. So my weld on my rig can go as smooth as can be. All right, guys. So a handy tip, once you get your, your welds on, okay, you want to make sure that these the way you took them off is the way you're going to put them back in. This is how I took these off. So if you can remember that, that's perfect. Because next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see which one of these I'm going to put in the front and in the back. Now, these with the larger holes, there's uh, different sizes, as you can see. Okay, you can't mistake in these. The holes are on one of them are bigger than the other. So you wanna make sure that the one with the bigger size, they're gonna go in the front. Small ones, 
to the rear. So I'm on the passenger side right now. So one thing I've noticed is that depends how you weld it. This might not go around as easy as the other ones. I don't know if it's because of the weld or just the way it's constructed, but I wanna make sure that this is turning before, because before I weld them on, I can always, you know, kinda grind it a little bit and where this will fit. So this one's gonna fit on this one here. And I wanna see if this is gonna fit on this one here. So this is perfect. Okay, now if I decide to put it on this one here, for some reason, this, it's a lot harder to turn. Don't know why, but just like right about there, it's kind of stuck. A little harder. For welding on a car, it's best practice to disconnect both the positive and the negative terminals of the battery. This ensures complete isolation and reduces the risk of electrical issues during the welding process. So as you can tell, I went ahead and sanded this, and then I went ahead and cleaned it up real good and put some xylene to get it nice and clean so my welds can come out pretty decent. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line that up to where I want it. Make sure that that is perfectly even on all ends. I'm gonna clamp it down just temporarily with this. Feel it out. And I'm gonna use a bigger clamp. The setting for this, now that I'm going from chromoly to uh, just steel, regular steel, I'm going to have it now to uh, wire speed 6. And I'm going to dial it down from D to C because this is the best weld from my truck to the chromoly. It's going to weld pretty good. And then I'm going to connect the ground clamp here to what I'm going to be welding or close to it put it right there and now like I said I'm going to tack weld it right around there turn this on you're going to hear it come on and this nozzle right here once you press the trigger the wire is going to come out Gas gauge is right around where I want it. Okay. I'm gonna do the same on this side here. I'm gonna go ahead and tack weld it. Uh, make sure that uh, this lines up. And the reason why I'm doing this is because before I start welding everything, I wanna make sure that everything's good, perfect, and I wanna go ahead and land my bolt and tie them up and see if they're gonna move around in there nice and even.
Let me give you the skinny on what's going on. I've noticed that when I went ahead and installed the can tabs, yes, not dropping dimes, I know, looks crappy. It looks look better once the paint's on there. Now, I've noticed that the cam bolts, one of these cams uh, does not rotate. This one here would not rotate in either, but on um, this one here, perfect. Rotates, badass. Not sure why this one doesn't rotate as easy. No matter which side, just kind of stay stuck there. Why goes beyond my imagination. Just in case you run into this same issue, you're prepared. Get yourself a rotary tool with a little sander about that size. And it'll get in this area here, and instead of being 3 16 it might be 2 16 but just shave it off a little bit, kind of go back and forth until this rotates around. Now, after my beautiful and lovely welds, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little paint on it so it won't rust. Yes, you should put primer first and then the paint. And then also I'm gonna go ahead and put some uh, anti-seize uh, in these lower control arms because why wouldn't I? This is how they would do it in a dealership. I'll leave a link in the description below, but this stuff is pretty cheap. But you want to make sure you lube these pretty good and then it's time to start putting everything back in reverse order now after this big job obviously you know you got to take this to get aligned one scenario i ran into uh, during this process was my cv joint had came out of the saddle and i thought i had pushed it in and i rode off the sunset uh, with that out of place and it wasn't pretty I broke a few things in there and that was another job that I did not record. I just wanted to get the job done, but just keep in mind, doing this job, your CV axle can come out of its saddle and don't go through what I went through. Now for those who know me uh, and to those who are new to my channel, you know that I'm always going to put some of that blue Loctite on all my bolts. I'll leave a link in the description below, but this is handy so that when you're driving down the road, they don't come off as easy as it would if you didn't have it on. It's supposed to lock those bolts in. CYA. Now to all you haters. I know I'm not stacking dimes. I'm not a welder by any means. I want to tip my hat to you guys. You guys are the pros. I'm just a weekend warrior. This is just a hobby for me. My nine to five is journeyman lineman by craft. I work on power lines, but I love to do stuff on my own. If you guys can help me with the algorithms, leave a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you want, subscribe. This will motivate me to continue to dish out more content. Hope you liked the video. I hope it can help you guys out or motivate you to do your own thing. Thank you guys. Peace.